I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk through this letter that has been emailed out to you with regards to student home testing. So as you are aware, um, students have been testing in school and that will finish from the 19th of March. So the majority of students in the school have conducted three tests between three and five days apart. And now we're now hoping to move to a home testing system. So students will be given their test kits on Tuesday the 16th, Wednesday the 17th or Thursday the 18th. Hopefully the majority of students will receive their test kits on Tuesday the 16th. Now these are students that who, who consented to the on-site testing. Um, if you didn't consent to the on-site testing but would like your child to do the home testing, um, that's fine. You can contact the school and we can um, send those test kits out to the child. If you don't want your child to do the home testing and again they come home with the test kits, just get your child to bring them back, not a problem, and we can um, receive them back from you. All of this is voluntary. But if children are doing the home testing, what we would like is to follow a cycle of a Monday and a Thursday for the home testing. So therefore, until the end of term, we'd like students to test on Monday the 22nd, Thursday the 25th, Monday the 29th and Thursday the 1st of April. We've also recently been informed by the government over the last few days that the Easter holidays, hopefully we are get, going to be getting students and staff testing during the Easter holidays. With this being the case, we'd like students to test during the holidays on Monday the 5th of April, Thursday the 8th, Monday the 12th, Thursday the 15th and Sunday the 18th of April. So if you look at all of the different times that students need to test, that's nine tests. Now the tests are free and students are going to receive three packs of three tests with a leaflet on how to take the test and how to report the results. And you'll see all of that um, in the next part of the video. Um, we do suggest that there is enough time to complete the test. So if it is a bit of a rush in the morning because everyone's lives are very, very busy, we don't mind um, as a school if you do the test the night before. So obviously on that Sunday night or on the Wednesday night. Um, in terms of taking the test, um, as you are watching this, you'll continue to be able to see the video that I have produced. But there is also an NHS video as well on YouTube where you can click uh, click the hyperlink as well and that covers the same sort of content that I do with my unboxing and testing video. Now the key thing is um, this doesn't replace symptomatic testing so if you or your child has symptoms you need to self-isolate and book a PCR test not the lateral flow test. So the key thing is what should you do after the test and again I'll talk through what you need to do with regards to um, logging the NHS test and trace report and also for the school. So there's two things you need to do. One is log on as I said for NHS test and trace and then there is also a Microsoft form that you can click on and record the information. The school um, form is very very simple to fill in, Does, doesn't take any time at all. The um, .gov.uk is a bit more complicated because you need to scan the barcode of the lateral flow test device. The key thing though is if you are positive or so your child is positive then your household and any people within that bubble should self isolate for 10 days. However you need to make sure that a confirmatory PCR test is done if you are testing at home. So a positive test at school is automatic isolation. But a positive test at home, you need to book a PCR test, isolate, and then if it is positive, you obviously continue to isolate for those 10 days. If it is negative, your child can come back into school. If you have negative or void results, again, you need to log them on NHS Test and Trace and with the Aston Manor database. If it is a void result, please do the test again. And again, on the video, I'll talk through what a void result is. So I said it's really important that you do report the test um, result each time. We know that there have been uh, sort of publicised concerns with the accuracy of lateral flow testing, but we feel that the more students one do the test themselves and get better at it, that increases the accuracy of the test. And obviously, the more students across the school population and staff are testing as well, the increased chance of picking up asymptomatic students and therefore reducing the chances of children having to isolate. But it is just one tool. OK, so we need to make sure we keep thinking about hands, face and space and ensuring that we are um, 
focusing on those key areas as well. Further information um, with regards to testing in school will be sent out later. So if your child and, and yourselves are finding it really difficult to test at home, but you're, you would like your child still to be tested, there is an option for us to test a small number of students in school. Um, but please do contact me if you've got any other problems. And on the final couple of pages of the letter, which I won't scroll through, is some frequently asked questions, um, some information on those provided by the Department for Education. But if you continue to watch, you'll be able to see some information on how to take the test. Hello everyone, it's Mr Turner here. I'm going to show you how to uh, do your home test. So we're going to do the unboxing now. I've already sanitized and wiped down the area, so that is something you must always do, just with some household spray, make sure the area dries. And then this is your home test kit. Now the first thing to say is this instruction booklet, this is old, so I can put this to one side. So what we've got in our home test kit, if I get everything out, is we have seven of the swabs. So I'll put that back in the box. We have seven of the cartridges. Okay, so we can see that that is the same batch as the uh, batch number or the lot number here. Okay, we've got seven of these kits. I'll just drop them back in here. I have a bag which has got seven vials of the liquid that we're going to be using, the bu extraction buffer fluid that we're going to be using for the test. I have seven clear plastic bags. These bags are going to be used to dispose of the cartridge, the uh, little test tube, and then also the swab. And then I've got a packet of the seven test tubes. Hi everyone. Okay, I have done my test. Please make sure before you do your test, you blow your nose and then you re-sanitize or wash your hands. So I've done my test and I'm going to put my swab into the liquid. I'm then going to swirl my swab around for 10 to 15 seconds all the way around the liquid. I'm carefully going to take my swab out and then I'm going to place it in the clear plastic bag. So this is this can go in your normal waste after but I'm just going to put it in the clear plastic bag and then I'm going to carefully put the seal on. So I've still got my liquid there and we're going to put the seal on. Right, so now conducting the test. So what you need to do is two drops from this tube onto the S line or S spot here. Okay, so I've done those drops. And then what you will see on the cartridge is we will get a line gradually moving up. So you can see it's starting to go purple and it will continue to move up the cartridge. So at this point, as soon as you've, as soon as you've done the dots, uh, the two spots, sorry, on there, that's when you start a timer for 30 minutes. Okay, it must be 30 minutes. One thing you need to do is just check to make sure that as the fluid moves up the cartridge, when we get to the C, a line should start to form. But don't worry if it continues to move if, and if, if the, the colouring moves at a funny angle, that's not a problem. As long as it continues to move up the cartridge and as, as I said, we start to get a line forming.
So if I bring this closer to the camera, you can now see that there is a line just by the C. This is telling me that the test is valid. Okay, so you've done everything right. So you've managed to swab properly, put the right amount of the extraction fluid on and get the test right. So all you now need to do is wait for half an hour and then see whether there is a second line by the T. If there is a second line by the T, then this test is saying that you have tested positive for COVID. If it remains like this and there's just a single line by the C only, then that is a negative test result. After 30 minutes, check your um, cartridge. And as you can see here, I've still only got the one line. The colouring has, has gone and we've only got the one line. So this is a valid test and this test shows that I have tested negative for COVID-19. So what we now need to do is we now need to record the results on one of two different places. So we need to record it on the NHS and also on the for the school system as well. So I'll show you how to do that on the laptop. So once you've got your test result, you need to record it for the NHS and for the government. So what you need to do is if you are going to Google and type in record a lateral flow test or type in www.gov.uk backslash report hyphen COVID-19 hyphen result. And then what we need to do is we need to scroll down and click on start now and we just need to go through the questions I've recorded it for myself so parents may need to record it um, for other people okay if the child is under 16 they can help with that and definitely if they're under the age of if they're under the age of 12 so you can either create an account uh, which will reduce the amount of time that you need to record it each time however I'm going to continue without an account just to show you what it looks like initially then we need to go through the information so this is a um, college or other school college or other education provider click on continue now what I found with this is this is case sensitive it's better to put our postcode in which is B64 and it does take a little bit of time so I can click on it there if you want to type in the name, if you can't remember, it's B64PZ. Type in A, S, T. Allow it to find things. O, N. You see there's still lots of Astons and it's got to be a capital M to find us. So Aston Manor Academy. Click on continue. And then just follow the questions. When did you take the test? So I've taken that today. So you cannot record it over 48 hours previously so it needs to be on the day or the or the day after click on continue and then you have this option for what is the test strip id number so the test strip id number is the number that i mentioned previously that is just underneath the qr code so if you're doing this on your phone which you're able to do you don't have to do this on a computer phone or tablet if you click on um, scan test strip barcode then that will open up um, the camera so this will probably bring a picture of me if it wants to work it didn't work on the laptop the other day okay so that's what would happen so you can see me there wonderful and I should be able to hopefully scan the QR code it may not like it because it's a laptop there we go heard that beep and it's scanned and just check that that is correct as I said, if you don't have the option to scan it, you can just put that, num uh, that number in. But notice that you have to put the three letters first, then click on continue. And then you need to fill in all the information here. So it will be your name, uh, your date of birth, how you uh, travel to school or work, if you're a student or things like that. OK, so you will have all of that information. OK, the contact details that you need to fill in and so on and so forth. OK, and then once you go through all of that information, you'll get something on screen to say that you've registered your COVID test result. You will be given the option as well within this recording screen moving forwards of either saying that your test was negative, positive or void. So in my example, that was negative. So please make sure you click on the negative. And once you've done that, that then gets uploaded to the .gov website. On completing the form 
for .gov.uk, you will receive a screen like this if you have received a negative test, if you've inputted a negative test. So that's what you're looking like and you know that you've inputted the information correctly onto the website. To record a result, all you need to do is click on the link for the Microsoft form and then you'll get this form here. And it's very, very simple. We just need the first name and the last name of the student, their date of birth, the year group they're in, the date that they did the lateral flow test, and then the result, positive, negative, or void. We don't need to know anything to do with the barcode or anything further that you need to put on the .gov website when you're recording the result for NHS Track and Trace. And that's it, very simple, should hardly take any time. And that needs to be done every single time a student takes a test at home.